Welcome to Regime Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 54 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll discuss about server.execute method and the difference between server.transfer and server.execute. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch parts 51, 52 and 53 of this video series. Server.execute is very similar to server.transfer. Let's actually look at an example of using server.execute. Let's flip to Visual Studio. Here I have a very simple ASP.NET web application project with two web forms. On web form 1, I have two text boxes where the user can enter their name and email. And once they click this button, server.execute web form 2, they will be redirected to web form 2.aspx. And on this web form, I have two label controls which will then retrieve the values that we enter in these text boxes and display them within those label controls. And to just, uh, I mean, distinguish between the two web forms, we have this H1. This is web form 1 and this is web form 2. All right, so first let's code uh, the redirection. So once I double click the button control, we have the event handler generated. So server dot execute method. I want to use the execute method to redirect the user. And this method is expecting a single string parameter, uh, which is nothing but the path of the page we want to redirect the user to. Here we want to redirect the user to web form 2.aspx. So tilde forward slash web form 2.aspx. Okay, so once we redirect the user to web form 2 on the page load event of webform 2.aspx.cs, we need to write code to retrieve the values from these text boxes and display them in the label controls on this web form. And obviously we have seen how to do that in the previous session of this video series when we were discussing about server.transfer. The exact same techniques are applicable here as well. So we can use the request objects form property. And if you look at the request objects form property, this is going to give us a collection of the previous form variables. And if you look at what it's returning, it is returning a name value collection, name value pair collection object. And that object is present in system.collections.specialized namespace. So let's declare a variable of that type. So system.collections.specialized dot name value collection and let's call this previous form variables is equal to request dot form and then we can use this object to retrieve the uh, text from the text box name and text box email so let's see how to do that so which is nothing but let's copy the object name here previous form variables and then to this we can pass the name of the text box control on the previous web form which is nothing but txt name and then this can be assigned to label name variable label name dot text is equal to whatever we get back and along the same lines we can do the same thing for txt email and assign the text from that text box to label email so it's pretty much similar to what we have seen in the previous session of this video series. All right, now let's go ahead and run this and see if the values that we enter on web form 1 will be transferred to the label controls on web form 2. And remember here we are using server.execute uh, server method. And look at the URL. We are currently on web form 1 and the URL is web form 1.aspx. So let's say the name is Prajim and email is Prajim at prajimtech.com. And then once we click this server.execute method, we should be redirected to web form 2. So we are on web form to look at that. This is the primary difference between server.transfer and server.execute. Now we are still on web form 1, but you know, web form 2 result is also shown here. And look at the URL. The URL is still web form 1. Okay, so if you look at the major difference between server.transfer and server.execute is this. Server.transfer terminates the execution of the current page and starts the execution of the new page. Whereas server.execute process the second web form without leaving the first web form. You will still be on the first web form and the output of the second web form will be displayed on the first web form. After completing the execution of the first web form, the control returns to the second web form. Let's understand what we mean by this. Okay, now let me close this. 
on web form one look at that I have this button control which I mean which when we click we go to web form two dot ASPX now on this web form I also have a label control here now all I am doing here and if you look at the ID of that label it's called LBL status that's the ID of the label so what I'm gonna do is in this button click event I'm gonna set the text LBL status dot text is equal to now look at this when we click the button we are telling okay server dot execute web form 2 dot ASPX which means at this point it's going to start executing you know web form 2 page load event and all the events on web form 2 and then after the processing of web form 2 the call is going to come back to web form 1 okay and then it will execute this line and that's the proof for us you know to tell the call is coming back to web form 1 let's say uh, completed processing web form 1 okay and it should be back here setting the text to the label actually let's put a breakpoint to prove that and let's run this so when the page first loads we will be on web form 1 and we will be able to enter the txt name the value for txt name and txt email and once we click this button on this web form 1 it will redirect us to web form 2 I mean in the sense it will start executing the events of web form 2 and then as soon as it finishes processing web form 2 the control should come back to web form 1 so let's say presume and let's say the email is test I click server dot execute look at that it hits the breakpoint so F10 so server dot execute it's going to go to web form 2 so let's put a breakpoint there so the page load of web form 2 should be executed now so I press F10 so we get to page load of web form 2 it finishes processing that and then look at that the control come back to the first web form okay so completed processing web form 1 and it came back and look at that the the output of the web form 2 and web form 1 is combined here whereas if we use server dot transfer it terminates the execution of the current page and starts the execution of the new page and the call doesn't come back to the first page because it has already terminated the execution of the current page and to just prove that let's stop debugging so debug stop debugging and then what we are going to do here is instead of server dot uh, execute I'm going to use server dot transfer here okay it's exact the same code and now let's run this page and obviously as you might expect actually we want to debug it so let's put a breakpoint there and then run the project so we have the breakpoint already so we'll run this now what happens since we are using server.transfer you know the server.transfer will end the current web form execution so let's say presume and test and I click this button look at what's gonna happen as soon as it encounters this line server.transfer it goes there F10 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 so this is web form 2 and I press F5 look at that it doesn't come back to web form 1 okay which means it's currently you know server.transfer terminates the execution of the current page and starts the execution of the new page whereas server.execute process the second web form without leaving the first web form after completing the execution of the first web form the control returns back to the second web form that's the major difference between server.transfer and server.execute otherwise there are many similarities between server.transfer and server.execute the URL in the browser reminds the first page URL so if you remember whether you we use server.transfer or server.execute the redirection is happening on the server without the knowledge of the client I mean without the client knowing that's why the URL in the browser doesn't get updated okay that's one similarity let's put back this to server.execute and server.transfer and server.execute can only be used to navigate to sites or pages on the same web server trying to navigate to sites or pages on a different web server causes runtime exception and we have seen how this runtime exception happens uh, when we are talking about uh, server.transfer as well so let me click this this button server.execute so we have the even handler there so when I say server.execute and I want to go to let's say HTTP colon forward slash forward slash presume tech dot com this website is not hosted on this uh, laptop 
so obviously this is present on a different web server so trying to navigate to that URL using server.execute will throw a runtime exception so let's run this and then once we click that button and when it tries to navigate to an external website that's hosted on a different web server we get a runtime error so again, server.execute is similar to server.transfer in that aspect. And server.transfer and server.execute preserves the form variables from the original request. And we have seen how to do that. By default, it preserves that. But then you have a Boolean property, you know, which you can set, uh, you know, to false if you don't want to preserve those values. So if I set that to false, and then if we run this, as you might expect, you know, the previous form values will not be preserved. But then if we, okay, so let's say Prajim, and then when I set it to test, now look at that, it's not showing those values. That is because you have intentionally set, you know, the preserve form values parameter to false. And actually there is another way to retrieve, uh, uh, just like server.transfer, you know, when we transfer from one web form to another web form using server.execute, another way to retrieve the free previous form values is to use the previous page property. And we have seen how to use that when we are talking about uh, server.transfer. So the page class has got previous page property. So we can use this. And previous page returns a page object. So I'm just going to say this as previous page is equal to that if the previous page if the previous page is not equal to now then what we want to do we want to find on I mean the previous page for web form 2 is web form 1 because we are coming to web form 2 from web form 1 so and on the previous page that's on web form 1 we know that we have a control called txt name and we know that that control is a text box but if you look at this find control method it is returning the control back and we want to typecast that to be of type text box so I'm going to typecast that to be of type text box and then we can retrieve the text out of it. And then we can set that to LBL name dot text. And along the same lines, we can retrieve the email, the name of the email text boxes, txt email, and the label name is email. Okay. So let's comment this out. So now we are using previous page technique. So obviously let's run this page. Now when we are using you know the previous page property, then this parameter doesn't have any impact. It's always going to retain those values, the previous page values. Once the page loads, we can enter the values here. So regime test and I click this button, it retains those values. Okay, another very important point to keep in mind is that let's say I have a button on Web Form 2. Uh, let's insert a row below and then let's put a button control here which is going to post back to the web server and all this button going to do is it will simply post back to the server so I'm just going to change the text to post back we're not going to have any server-side code for this one so once I click this button you know there's an event handler but we are not going to do anything there okay so let's run this now so remember we are using the server.execute technique here to redirect the user uh, let's get rid of this one let's run it once again So once the page loads, we can enter the values, let's say Prajim, and test. So I click this button, server.execute. So we are on Web Form 2. Now there is a button on Web Form 2. Now look at the URL. We are currently on Web Form 1.aspx. Um, now, and this is Web Form 2. So obviously this button control is on Web Form 2. Now once I click on this button, and once the Web Form posts back, look at what happens to the output. Look at that, the output of Web Form 1 is gone, and look at the URL, it got changed to Web Form 2. Okay. 
On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.